The world is not a land of magical candy canes and rainbows where people dance around holding hands, riding unicorns. The world has its ups and its downs. There are people we love and things we enjoy. And typically life is pretty good for many people, not always good for everyone. But there are bad people who aim to do bad things. And I think I get particularly frustrated by all these people who think we can live in this utopian society without realizing that crime exists. Some people are opportunists. Some people are, dare I say, evil. We're seeing crime go up. This story from the Daily Mail, burglaries and car thefts double in Queens community, hardest hit by coronavirus, while major crime rate across NYC plummets 33%. Now that makes sense, the crime plummeting. But it seems like what's really happening is that the, the opportunistic crimes, people who might mug or snatch a purse or, or shake you down, they're, they're indoors. And with more potential, with, with everyone basically indoors, there's less of an opportunity for crime. It's not like people are deciding to commit crimes less. In fact, it would seem they're committing crimes more. We'll come back to the story because this is not the reason why you clicked on this video. We can see this commercial burglary soar since coronavirus emergency measures. But I want to talk about the more personal individual story here. Shocking daylight home invasion during virus lockdown is stopped by Chicago homeowner fatally shooting one of the masked intruders and beating up the other. Warning, distressing content. We'll come back to these other stories about the increasing crimes, the opportunist, or it's, it's commercial burglary and car theft. And we've, we, we've got a real threat of social order breakdown. Now, listen, we are hearing some good news. The Dow Jones, the economy, they're, they're improving, but we're also seeing some bad news. 16 point, or, or what are we at? Yeah, about 16.6 million unemployment claims. It's hard to know if we are through this, if we are getting to the end. I don't know. I don't want to be overly pessimistic. Often I'll see a story that sounds like things are getting better. And then we'll see stories that sound like things are getting bad. The reason why this story is significant is that the men showed up, the burglars, the criminals, showed up to this man's house wearing masks looking like they were just protecting themselves from coronavirus. They then tried to invade this guy's home and they got a, they got a surprise. They made a very, very stupid move because the homeowner was armed. And unfortunately for one of these criminals, they lost their life that day. This is on the fourth. The other man was beaten up and fled. The police arrested the accomplice who was then charged with the murder of the man he was trying to invade the home uh, with the criminals. And that's Unfortunately, what happens? I, 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 I do not revel in the death of people. I do not in, in, in any way enjoy it. But you see what happens when you try and break into someone's home to commit a crime, to steal from them, to rob them, to exploit the pandemic and the fears we all have. The greater segment I want to talk about this, this morning has to do with the real threat of societal breakdown. And I'm, I'm actually feeling a bit optimistic, though. I mean, we're seeing that the, we, we may be nearing a peak we may be seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. They're talking about reopening the economy by, by around May 1st, which is just after the April 30th deadline. So we'll see how things play out. Let's read this, though. And then I want to talk to you about the real risk of the increase of crime. The Daily Mail reports, a homeowner stopped an attempted break-in during the coronavirus lockdown by fatally shooting one of the two intruders and beating the other. I got to say, man, my, my, my respect to the homeowner, that's, that, that's it. I, I respect he actually stopped two intruders and he, he unfortunately one of them had to die, but he beat the crap out of the other one. I'm impressed with his ability to defend himself. That's 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 strength. Doorbell footage released by Illinois police show Bradley Finnan, 39, and Larry Brodex, Brodek, 58, approaching a home in Arlington Heights, wearing masks, gloves, baseball caps, and black jackets. Now Arlington Heights is a suburb of Chicago. They attempted to open the door, but found it locked before spotting the doorbell camera. One suspect approaches the door and looks directly into the camera before knocking on the door. We can see these photos. They're wearing gloves and masks. They're exploiting the coronavirus pandemic to get away with being masked up for a home invasion. If somebody was seen wearing, you know, black gloves and a ski mask with a buddy walking up to a house in any normal circumstance, people would be like, yo, what is this? Oh, they're just wearing protective gear like everybody else. When the door, when the door opens, one intruder can be heard saying, hey, how you doing, boss? before they both barge inside. Shouting can be heard mere moments, including a female voice yelling, hey, repeatedly. Moments later, the barefoot homeowner dressed in a red shirt and shorts shoves Finnan out the door. He pins him to the ground and punches him repeatedly, landing a series of blows. The homeowner can be heard shouting for help towards landscapers across the street. Finnan is able to escape the homeowner's grip 
and trips into the street as the homeowner races back inside. During the home invasion, Broddox was shot dead in what authorities describe as self-defense. It is unclear if he was killed before or after his struggle with Finnan outside the home. Finnan was later captured by police. He was charged on Tuesday by Cook County prosecutors with murder and home invasion. The Daily Herald reported that a statute allows defendants to be charged with murder if they take part in a felony offense leading to another person's death. There is a bit of what's the right feeling? It's like karmic justice. It is it is it is instant karma. These people sought to invade someone's home, violate the rights of a man who successfully fended off two criminals. Unfortunately, one of them had to lose their life. But I got to tell you what, man, it feels really good to see this guy get arrested and charged with all of it. Crime is unfortunately going up. And this was just a singular instance that I thought would be important to show you. Look at these photos. The guys are wearing the latex gloves. They're wearing masks. They're trying to exploit this so that people don't, don't you know, see what they're doing. I don't know what they were thinking trying to invade some guy's home, but I'm glad he was able to protect himself the way he did. I am seriously glad. It is not an easy thing to, to uh, be armed in Illinois. It's, it's, a, it's a blue state, to say the least. But we're seeing this stuff. Check this out. The Daily Mail says burglaries and car thefts double. As major crimes have plummeted in New York City during the first two weeks under strict stay-at-home orders, some neighborhoods hit hardest by coronavirus are seeing a spike in burglaries and car thefts. Across all five boroughs, the number of major crimes cases, which range from murder and felony assault to grand larceny, has dropped 33 percent. Yes, it has. But I think it's fair to point out a lot of these crimes that you'll see in New York, Chicago or LA, big cities. It'll be like someone walking down the street. Some guy will be like, "Ooh, I'm going to you know, I'm going to go after that guy with everyone in home. There's less victims. So the fact that it's down 33 percent amid a major lockdown, I think it should actually be down substantially. It should be down way more. Unfortunately, it's not. I think what we're actually seeing here is how dangerously close we sit to societal breakdown at any given time. It's only been a few weeks and we're seeing home invaders. We're seeing burglaries, thefts, commercial looting. There are there are people. They are not good people. I'm sure there are some desperate people. I'm sure there will always be crimes of desperation. But come on, these home invaders, that wasn't desperation. That was exploitation. That was opportunity. These people don't care about protecting their community. They don't care about you. They don't care about other people. So comeuppance and karmic justice feels good, doesn't it? They say in Southeast Queens, where the majority of the city's cases have been reported, there have been a fi- there's, been, there's been a 50% increase in burglaries and car thefts over the past two weeks. Major crimes there have fallen 25%. In East and Central Harlem, burglaries are up 18%. Now, I, I listen, liberals, I, I hate using the word liberal, but urban dwellers who are, you know, probably more default liberal, probably not super politically active. They got a hard wake up call with a lot with these stories, with home invasions, with the burglaries, with the commercial thefts. Check, check this out. Commercial burglaries soar. We started seeing businesses all over New York start boarding up their windows, locking things down, fearing civil unrest. I mean, this is it. Set, what is it? 75% increase? Is that what they're saying? Yeah, here we go. Look, they've risen 75%. They've nearly doubled because people are exploiting a crisis. So in these places, you've seen urban liberals flock to gun stores. I'm not surprised. They're now realizing that with police strained, police sick, what is it? One in five NYPD officers are out sick. You can't rely on this. You can't rely on them, unfortunately. And the other thing that people don't seem to realize is you know, I've personally dealt with home defense issues. I've personally dealt with crimes. In most instances, if you're the victim of a crime, the police are there to show up after the fact to try and track down this person to stop them in the future. But they can't stop them while they're committing the crime unless it happens like right in front of a cop. When is that ever going to happen? There's not a police officer in this man's home when the home invasion starts. He was able to defend himself and I can respect it. But we're seeing something beyond this. So let, let me show you this. This, this. this really, really makes me angry. Look, I've, I'm not a uh, hardcore 2A traditionalist, you know, gun toting, anything like that. I'm very moderate on these issues, but I can certainly respect why somebody would want to defend themselves. When it comes to how fragile society is, it seems like there are too many people who live in cities who think the world is candy canes and rainbows. This photo you're seeing, 6,000 families lined up in their cars for hours at Traders Plaza in San Antonio for a food distribution event on Thursday. You know why this photo really, really makes me angry? In, I think it was like February and early March, I did a series of promos for an emergency food supply company. Many of you probably bought some. I'm glad you did. For those that didn't care, it's all on you. You don't got to take my advice. But I'll tell you what, 
I told people, listen, you do not want to be fighting over the last can of beans in a parking lot because the world isn't a, a safety bubble. We just happen to have luxury and we happen to have the illusion of security. We've been living in this prosperous golden age for so long. No one realizes how bad things can really get. Me having been to many countries witnessing revolution, economic collapse, disaster economies, I know full well what could really happen. And maybe it's because a lot of conservatives have, you know, uh, grown up outside of cities where they're very, they, they must be self-reliant. It's why they have these views. For me, I've been to Venezuela. I've seen what happens when the food runs out. I've been to countries that declare revolution and the stores get wiped clean. There's no more, there's no, no, no more supply chain. And so I said, do not believe that you will be safe from everything all the time in your fancy little perfect bubble world. And sure enough, you get all of these snooty, skeptic, smarty pants on Twitter, mocking and laughing and making fun. I'll tell you what, man, I know better than you. I don't care if you want to mock and belittle me. I really don't. And now I feel bad. These stupid, stupid people who would tell you, oh, ignore Tim. Don't buy, you know, emergency supplies for your family amid a global pandemic. How insane are these people? And now how many people had to line up in cars? 6,000 families desperate for food. Millions are going hungry. You look at these photos. They're, they're having to give out emergency supplies as people line up in these massive, massive parking lots because they have no food. These are not poor people. These are not homeless people. These are people who have lost access to the supply chain. 6,000 families lined up in their cars hours at Traders Plaza in San Antonio for a food distribution event on Thursday. These, are, these people aren't homeless. They have cars. But something happened and they needed food. They weren't getting it. Perhaps it's because 16.6 million people just lost their jobs or had to file uh, unemployment claims, whatever, 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 however that translates to unemployment. They say 10% of the workforce is out. Now they have no money. So maybe, maybe the issue is, and, and I'll be fair, maybe the issue is they wouldn't have had the money to buy the emergency food in the first place. Maybe that's the real issue. Not everybody can afford to spend, you know, 100, 200 bucks on a two week food supply. And, and that's fine. I get it. I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you what you should or shouldn't do if you can't do something. But it's, it, I'll, I'll tell you what's really frustrating. I've done so many videos, so many segments talking about how there are these people who just think the world is all unicorns and rainbows. And that's just, uh, you, you hear me say it now several times, but we've seen stories of people going and riding their bikes in Tajikistan. Guess what happens? People going hiking in the mountains of Morocco. Guess what happens? And even here in the United States, minding their own business in their own homes. And what happens? Now, I'm not trying to tell you the world is fire and brimstone. I'm trying to tell you to be an adult. Be mature and recognize that sometimes disasters happen. I'm, I'm frustrated by this because there are so many people who probably have the means to buy the food, but you go, you go to these stores and the shelves are cleared out. I don't know when this will end. We're still locked down. Uh, people are blaming Trump for what's happening in, in, in New York City. They're calling it the Trump burial pits. Bill de Blasio downplayed this. The same as all the other morons on Twitter who gloated and laughed saying, you don't need to buy any supplies. Ignore Tim. Bill de Blasio was saying the same thing. Ah, no, nah, don't worry about the global pandemic. Just go out and do your thing. Check, check out these tweets. There, there, there's a, a trend right now, Trump burial pits. Okay. Bill de Blasio tweeted on March 2nd, since I'm encouraging New Yorkers to go on with your lives, get out of the town despite coronavirus, I thought I would offer some suggestions. Here's the first. Through Thursday, go see The Trader at Film Inc. Uh, Film Link. If The Wire was a true story set in Italy, it would be this film. Do you know what this tweet from Bill de Blasio reveals? It reveals that the people of New York City were getting skittish, that they were worried about the potential virus, and they were probably acting in accordance. And Bill de Blasio resisted. The people of the city knew better. Not everybody, but a lot of people. And so to re reverse people trying to avoid going out and being worried, he started saying, no, 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 it's fine. I'm going to encourage you to ignore your, your greater sense. You knew, people of New York, you were worried. The stories were popping up. There's a virus. It's a pandemic. People are losing their lives. And the people of New York, New York were worried. And Bill de Blasio came out and said, ignore it. You'll be fine. Go see a movie. Now on Twitter, the leftists are blaming Trump for this. Trump is the president. He certainly has responsibilities. He can certainly be criticized for a slow response. All of these things. 
New York City, and the big impact, the mass graves that, you know, they're digging mass graves in New York. Yeah, that's on Bill de Blasio. He, like all of these other people who would tell you not to protect your home, who would tell you not to have any emergency supplies, who would mock you for buying it. These people are insane. And now you can see how bad it gets when you when you elect these people to office. It's not about liberal policy or conservative policy. It's about responsibility. It's about maturity. You can certainly believe in government social programs and progressive tax increases and still recognize why you need a firearm to defend your family or why you might need emergency food or why you might need a first aid kit. Burglaries, commercial burglaries are going up. So what are the businesses doing? Boarding up their buildings. You know why? Because they know what comes next. Bill de Blasio, on the other hand, everybody go out and party. Now, to be fair, Bill de Blasio has changed his tune. But here's what I tweeted. Last I heard, Trump wasn't the mayor of New York, let alone the one who encouraged people to get together while the pandemic was sweeping across the world. That was Bill de Blasio. Of course, after the fact, instead of accepting responsibility for ignoring this, for telling people not to prepare, they just blame Trump. You know what's funny? There's a lot of blame to go around. For the most part, China. Come on, let's be real. And we can criticize Trump and say he could have done a better job. And I think it's a good thing to criticize him. I'm not saying he's done a bad job. In fact, most people tend to think he's done a good job. As of recent, Trump's polling has gone down. His response to the coronavirus is now inverted in the polls. Whether or not you want to trust the polls, I think it's fair to say if I'm going to highlight polls showing Trump's approval rating is going up in the aggregate, I'll, I'll mention that they're going down. And right now, across the board, Trump's, Trump's approval rating is still really high relative to the rest of his presidency. But his response on the coronavirus has now inverted and he's got more disapproval than approval. I don't think it's statistically significant because it's not the highest. You know, it's not a major increase or anything like that, but it is significant to mention. So the president does deserve some criticism. He could do a better job. And I think criticizing him constructively and saying do better is a good thing. I think what they've done, what these, the, the, it, it, it tends to be you know, it's a strange thing. There are many things you can criticize conservatives for. Absolutely 100%. But right now we're looking at responsibility. And for some reason, this goes out the window with the left. They don't take responsibility for their jobs. They don't take responsibility for their rent. They don't take responsibility for the cities and the problems they've created. And it's exemplified by Trump, the hashtag Trump, bur Trump burial pits. You got to own it, man. Is, is there something that separates conservatives and liberals where they don't want to own up to their mistakes? And I, th I think that's actually a really good example of why they've been losing so much in the past several years. If you can't own up to your mistakes, how can you correct them? How can you do better next time? What you're seeing from Bill de Blasio, as he encouraged people to go out, is the exact same thing that results in this. 6,000 people lining up saying, I don't have food. Because when they should have been preparing for the worst, for the storm, they probably weren't. Again, I'll be fair. Many of them probably didn't have the means to do so. They're going to a food distribution event. You can certainly still go to many areas and buy food. So I'd imagine many of these people lost their jobs because they're living paycheck to paycheck. I think we have economic issues, you know, that need to be dealt with. I don't know how you can help, you know, I don't know how many of these families could do better if they're working low skill, low wage jobs and they can't afford to save. But we end up with people who are trapped. You end up with people who ignore the advice, who laugh, who think they're smart. How many people left New York before it got bad? How many people went out and bought extra groceries before the prices started going up? We've seen stories that certain uh, uh, certain products have started skyrocketing in cost. I was I was at, I was at the store, you know, last week or so, and a guy who, who was running a restaurant was was buying as much as, much as he could because he runs a restaurant. Said that the price of eggs was skyrocketing because supply chain disruption, because of demand. So what happens if, if, if you go out before the storm hits? When I said back in, you know, February, hey, you know, don't go nuts. Just go buy some extra supplies. Well, what's, what's the worst that would have happened? You'd have got in. You'd have, you'd, have, you'd have walked in, bought yourself, walked out. But somebody would have made fun of you. Is it worth it? You look, man, I'll tell you what. You can call me every name in the world and I'm going to be like, yep. But maybe it's just me because I get it all the time. I got a ton of followers on, on Twitter and, and it's just inundated with stupid people mocking and belittling and saying dumb things. And I just don't care. I know what I need to make it through the worst of the worst. I hope you recognize that as well. And that means there's not always going to be this, uh, someone there to protect you. You, you want to rely on the fire department? Yeah, but don't you have a fire extinguisher? This is one of the funniest things about the, the, the anti-2A arguments. They say, what do you need a gun for? Just call the police or something like that. It's like, what do you need a fire extinguisher? Just call the fire department uh, because you need to put the fire out right away, right? Well, how does that work? 
We understand why we need a fire extinguisher. We don't understand why we need home defense, be it a firearm or otherwise. No, that's that's ridiculous. You got to take care of yourself and your family. I'm not, as I mentioned, the craziest gun toting two way guy. I think there are certain things we can do to uh, to, tr- to navigate how to better keep our communities safe in terms of gun regulation and such. But as far as I can tell right now, one of the biggest problems we've seen, especially in that area, is the failures of background checks, the, the willingness of these 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 uh, these the politicians to shut down gun shops. So I don't know how you can actually implement laws to keep people safe if you're going to see people exploit the system to shut down our ability to protect our families. Here in New uh, in, in New Jersey, it's ridiculously hard to actually get a firearm for home defense, even though local police advise me to do so. I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. Look at the photo. Look at the crimes. Look at the home invasions. And let me just leave by saying, you got a fire extinguisher. I get it. You can't, for the most part, accidentally kill somebody with a fire extinguisher. But you also know the fire department isn't going to be there and the fire extinguisher is going to save your home from burning down. Look, what about this home invasion? If this dude didn't have, where we, if, if, this, if this dude who lived here didn't have home defense, who knows what would have happened to him and his family? The world is not all candy canes and rainbows, man. I'll see you all in the next segment at 1 p.m. Thanks for hanging out.